Okay, so I feel this was definitely the best episode in the second part of the second season of Invincible. This had everything within it, and it felt like it was really centered around the core story that the show had been building towards. Whether that be Donald learning the truth about why he's like the way that he is, the demise of Amber and Mark's relationship, Angstrom Levy making a return, Mark slowly resembling his father more and more, and the Viltrumite threat becoming ever-present. There was so much good entertainment and delivery amongst this episode, so let's not wait any longer and just break down and explain Invincible Season 2, Episode 7. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Angstrom Levy's Appearance Now, I thought Levy was going to have a much larger appearance in this season of the show, and I am a bit disappointed. Other than in the first episode, the only time we've really seen him has been in small sections in the post credit scenes or right at the end. And that was also the case in this episode too. During episode 7, we saw that he phoned Mark on Debbie's phone and asked when it was that he was coming home as he held Debbie and Oliver hostage. This is something which is taken from the comic and it essentially sees both Mark and Levy going through multiple dimensions and fighting with one another. But this won't be the end of their story. This is a small battle that's in preparation for one arm of the Invincible War and the multiple different Mark Graysons and Omnimans that we saw way back in Episode 1 of Season 2 will most likely be making an appearance again. But I'm going to imagine that this story is something that's going to be going all the way through to Season 3 of the show and it won't get wrapped up by the season finale next week. I'm kind of glad about that though because I like Angstrom Levy and we've not really had that much of him. Mark is resembling his father. I actually think one of my favorite things about the episode this week was everything that was going on with Amber and Mark's relationship. The whole episode was pretty much centered around that as it started with the awkwardness between the pair following the uncomfortable nature that was present in the last episode. In the entirety of the first part of the season, Mark didn't want to become his father. Knowing what his father became, it was the very thing that he seemed to fear the most. However, we're seeing him slowly morph into his father as time goes on mainly when it comes to relationships and the absence that can often be felt in them. There was a scene in the episode where Mark was talking to the dean of his college where it was said that he needed to make a decision on what it was that he wanted to do, whether he wanted to stay at college or not. And although at that point they were discussing school, it was kind of metaphorical for the decision that he had to make with Amber and the work with Cecil that he was doing. And in this instance, he came to the decision that he was going to pick Amber, this was after he spoke with his mother and saw how she felt every time that she was left by Nolan for weeks at a time. She said, is it really a relationship if you're always alone? And I think Mark saw that Amber was truly feeling that and he didn't want her to feel like what her mother felt. So he quite literally swept her off her feet. But during this time, Anissa appeared, a Viltrumite that was sent there to make sure that Mark was doing his mission, and she threatened to kill Amber if he didn't go with her. Anissa's hands were wrapped around Amber's neck and she was moments away from being killed, and that was something that Amber truly felt. Once Mark returned from being with Anissa, there were some really powerful moments that occurred. Amber was sitting there in tears, almost paralyzed with fear over the fact that she could have just lost her life through being associated with Mark. She also realized that things were just never going to change because like Nolan, Mark would always be called away for long periods of time and have to leave her. The score in the background of this scene was a piano piece that was so beautifully composed because it was lovely to listen to and was relatively romantic, but it was also sad and chaotic at the same time. It always felt like Mark and Amber were going to break up, but I actually thought it was quite an emotional scene to watch. I felt the heartbreak that they were both going through. They want to be with each other, but the understanding and realization that they couldn't for the sake of their lives was something which meant that they had to part ways. The Viltrumite Threat Anissa was introduced to us in this episode and we saw that there were some slight differences that were present in the scene. During the episode, we saw that Anissa interrupted Mark and Amber being together at dinner. However, within the comic, she actually interrupts Mark and Debbie and threatened to kill his mother if he didn't speak to her. So in the context of the show, having it be Amber meant that the breakup had more weight behind it. Anissa spoke of the Viltrumites' plan and that Earth would essentially become a utopia under the rule of the Viltrumites and that death would almost become a thing of the past, as they'd be able to ensure that the human species lived a much better life as a whole. However, the one major caveat to that is, is that they'd be under the thumb of a superior species and one which didn't let death stand in the way of anything. In fact, they'd kill whoever got in their way if there was any resistance. So she wanted to make sure that Mark was doing what Craig said to him at the end of Season 2 Part 1, but obviously he wasn't. 
The conversation progressed to the point where there was a cruise ship that needed saving from a monster, and it felt like this scene was there so that we could see just how strong Anissa was when compared to Mark. There was only an 18% chance that Mark would be able to defeat her, and she so easily wiped out the monster that was there when compared to Mark having to go several rounds with it. We saw Mark's loyalty to himself, but also to the people of Earth when she said that he needed him to agree to start the Viltramite ruling on Earth and get everybody in line for it but he refused to agree to it, showing that he was prepared to die for the cause that he believed in. And the half-human side that's inside of him is something that is far more valuable to him and the parts of him that he associates with more, despite being a superhero. With Anissa leaving him alive just after having him on the cusp of death, we saw that she said that another agent would be down to make sure that he'd started the work. So with Mark most definitely not siding with the Viltramites, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. During the post credit scene, we saw that she was back in space with Craig and they saw Alan flying in and she launched an attack on him. However, Alan was significantly stronger than before and her punches didn't land with the impact that they once did. Alan even managed to make her bleed, something which Mark wasn't even able to do when he was fighting her. So it showed us the real improvements of strength that Alan had after Thedas turned off the machine. However, after kicking him, she got a hold of him and then started taking him to prison. But it seemed like Alan faked his injuries and the reason that he did that was so that he could go to prison. The prison that he knew Omniman was held up in. So I think this is where we're going to be seeing an escape taking place. The escape that takes place in the comic where Alan and Omniman try to break out. So I imagine that's going to be occurring during the finale next week. Donald's understanding and purpose. Throughout this second part of the season, I was always wondering what was going to happen with Donald and if he was going to turn on Cecil. There were many moments in the build-up to this episode, in previous ones, where he'd be shaking his fist and I did actually think that he'd end up going against him. However, in this episode, with him stating that he wanted to quit, it prompted Cecil to show Donald the truth about why he's 98% android. Donald had it in his head that he didn't feel right because his memories were being wiped. However, it turned out that it was always Donald's decision to have his memories erased and not Cecil's. We saw that he'd been killed 39 times in total and that he'd been put back together that amount of times too. So it made sense as to why he was 98% android. But the reason for this focus and him coming to terms with the fact that he shouldn't feel any less human was for his connecting story with Rick. Rick was constantly having nightmares about D.A. Sinclair and the fact that he was being taken apart and put back together. And it was impacting him to the point where he was on the edge of a ledge and was prepared to end it all. But once Donald arrived, he essentially said that being human wasn't about what was inside of a person in a physical sense, but it was how they made people feel and the difference that they made to the people that were around them. And that was something which saved Rick from jumping off of the edge and going back to safety. So Donald's discovery and realization of himself was vital to the development of Rick and it tied into that part of the story. Debbie's progression. One thing that I've taken away from this second part of the season is that Debbie has grown as a character so much more than what we saw in the first part of the season. It felt like the first four episodes were all about her being stuck within her own mind and mourning the life that she once had. We saw that she had no purpose in life and felt like her entire marriage was essentially a lie, ultimately building to the point in episode four where it seemed like she was going to jump from the bridge. But remember, she made the decision not to. However, what this second part of the show is built upon with the character is Debbie's strength that she had in order to survive. We're now seeing a Debbie that has found purpose and happiness again. She was asked out on a date in this episode, something which she's going to go on. She was also getting called Mama by Oliver and she told Oliver how she missed him during the day, showing that he's actually that core focal point that's helping her get her life back on track. She's no longer mourning the past like the first part of the season because there are plans that are getting made for the future and she's actually able to focus on moving forward and provide the love, attention, and care that she was once able to give to Nolan and Mark but was absent for so long. Overall review. I thought this was a really good episode in the season. Like I said at the start, I think it could be the best in season two part two. I just felt like each individual story had such weight and value to it and it really made the characters feel real and just allowed us to connect to them even more. Amber and Mark's scene was my favorite because it was just such a human experience. Seeing their heartbreak being translated across the screen and knowing that they loved each other deeply but just couldn't be together because of their own situations was just so upsetting to watch. I do feel like the gap in between the seasons did do something to the show. It does feel like we're only just getting started, but it's finishing next week. So it is a strange one, as I don't quite know how to feel about it. 
It feels like we've had two short miniseries rather than a longer one with a long overarching story. Plus, there's also a lot for the show to wrap up by the end of the next episode, so I don't quite know how they're going to do that. But either way, I'm extremely excited to see how it's going to finish. So, there you have it. Invincible Season 2 Episode 7 Ending Explained